Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma bera habitu filah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A question was asked, is it permissible or is it possible to study Islam on the internet? First and foremost, in the context of the contemporary times, of course there are various means to study Islam. Studying Islam by the internet can never be as valuable and as beneficial as studying traditionally. Traditionally, studying in the circles of knowledge and studying from the Islamic established, well-established Islamic institutions, which study the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, with the correct uh, understanding that of the Sahaba Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam radiyallahu taala This is the best, and that is how you can safeguard what information you're taking from Islam. However, if a person's unable to travel and travel to uh, Islamic lands and study in those prestigious uh, institutions and circles, uh, traditional circles of knowledge in the, the masajid with the scholars of Islam, because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the scholars are the inheritors of the prophets. The scholars are the inheritors of the prophets. So that means that shows us as a Muslim, it's very important to take our knowledge from the transmitters of knowledge. And the scholars, they mention a beautiful uh, statement, take knowledge from its people. In another hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which shows us the importance of traveling for knowledge, to travel to the scholars and gain that uh, beneficial knowledge from its tree, from the roots. And that is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he said, Man salaka tariqan yaltalmasuhu bihi ilman sahla lahu luhu bihi tariqan al jannah. Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path of paradise. And then there's other narrations which show us and illustrate for us the importance of actually traveling for that knowledge. And this was the way of our pious predecessors. So with that being the case, that is no doubt the best way to acquire Islamic knowledge. If someone's unable to, though, for uh, whatever reason, then taking knowledge from the internet, from the internet and books has value as well, but it's not the same. And when we say taking knowledge from the internet, that doesn't mean just listening to anyone on the internet. And that doesn't mean just reading any books on the internet or any literature, but rather it has to be knowledge which has been passed down, which has been taken from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the understanding of the pious predecessors. And that is the important chain of knowledge. And that was also inherited and passed on by the scholars up until our time. And how do we know that we really need to go to those, those sources and that we need to take it uh, and have that understanding of the Sahaba? Why can't we take it from uh, a Sufi Marid or a Sufi um, uh, scholar or Imam who just who gets dreams and has um, insight and gets inferences, uh, infers about Allah and infers about what is the truth and, and gains knowledge from other sources like philosophy and music. Well, one of the reasons we can't do that is because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam said, خَيْرَ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي the best people are those people of my generation, then those who follow them, and then those who follow them. So that lets us know that there is, it's very important to have those, um, the, the sources of knowledge and to take the knowledge which is in line and deduced from the first three generations, meaning the Sahaba, their students, the Tabi'een and the itba'a tabi'in, their students. Rahimahullah wa radiyallahu ta'anhum ajma'in. One of the, without getting into many of the problems with taking knowledge from the internet and so forth, if a person finds reputable 
teachers and scholars that are teaching using the internet as a means. For example, you're going through books, not just lectures that make you feel good, but you're actually going through uh, text. You're going through the explanation of the Quran. You're going through explanations of the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hadith, their explanations, the sciences of Hadith. The, the, one of the most important sciences is the science of creed, Aqidah. And if you're going through that with those who are established and grounded in knowledge based on the Quran, the Sunnah, and the understanding of the pious predecessors, then those means can be immensely beneficial as a secondary uh, means to acquiring knowledge. And that can be done anywhere because not all of us have the luxury and the benefit of being able to travel abroad to go study with some of the great scholars that you find in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia or in Yemen or in Egypt or in Morocco or wherever they may be in the Muslim lands. So with that being the case, using the internet through sound sources, as a great Imam, Ibn Sarin, he mentioned that um, taking knowledge from its people that um, that that is uh, critical, and he said, "Falyandr ila men yachadun dinukum," or look to those people whom you take your knowledge. So it's very important to know what are the sources of knowledge. I would not advise ever as a source of actually thinking that you're going to be a reputable person of knowledge. It's going to secular universities to non-Muslims that can never never suffice for a person to be a religious scholar or a tree, achieve true religious scholarship in Islam. And so it's very important to look to the means of where you take your uh, Islamic knowledge from. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.